Here in Australia, you have a thing called the mullet. Now, I do not know the origins of the mullet. I do not know if there's a mullet.com. I don't know if a social anthropologist has tried to find the lineage of the mullet. All I know is in Australia, I have seen some of the most dazzling displays of this hairdo, the likes of which I have never seen anywhere in Arkansas, West Virginia, or anywhere else where they think 10% slower. Now. What starts as a number two Clippers, that's the one that I'm wearing, a man looks into the mirror one day and he has a vision. Oh, it's not gonna be six months from now. That mullet's going to take years. Years of careful cultivation. He's gonna have to start going to a barber. Like, no, no, I'm aiming for a mullet. We're talking a lion-esque mullet. A mullet that will be the envy of other mulleted men and women sometimes. Mm. Two years in, the mullet's starting to look pretty good in the back, and it's going over his collar. His new girlfriend has turned the top into a flat top. Looks pretty cool. Three and a half to four years later, that mullet now comes down to here. It's got the braided things, like the Mel Gibson uh, Braveheart things swinging around. The girlfriend's gone all crazy on it. It's different colors in the back. And there he is at a petrol station filling up one of those rugged, kick-ass A-male vehicles that men like to drive, wearing that classic Australian He-Man outfit that I just cannot for the life of me get over or understand. Tanned, hairy, and muscular legs with the weirdest and shortest pants I've ever seen on a he-Man. Like, what are you doing in hot pants, oh man who carries cement and lumber? One ball is kind of hanging down. I see you. <laughs> and there he is, like with the with a, the work shirt on, arms strong, you know, from days of work in the sun, and there's that mullet in the wind. <sighs> and he can't help but, yeah, feels great, mate. Like, just put it in the air, yeah. Yeah, yeah.